Hi, in this video demonstration we're going to talk about yet another way to achieve the ambient occlusion uh, shadowing effect. Uh, things like video games and other things that uh, require real-time renders and such uh, would have to have their ambient occlusion passes. Uh, we can't do it at the end because everything's done real-time. The character's got to move uh, based on a command from, uh, from someone, uh, a user, a player, and everything's got to happen real time. So another way we can do ambient occlusion and make things seem a little bit more uh, realistic with that kind of soft shadow and light uh, is to bake our ambient occlusion right into a texture. Uh, in order to show you this, first I'm going to create a couple of objects. Go to my Create tab here. I'm going to make a plane for the ground here. Uh, I can go to my Modify tab and let's make this fairly large, maybe about 1500 by 1500 and only one segment in each. I do want to make sure that uh, I've got my mental array uh, renderer assigned. Uh, and maybe I'll turn on my save frames, that's shift F if you don't remember. And we're going to kind of give ourselves just a little bit of a, of a scene here. And maybe I'll make the good old standby for render tests, uh, the teapot. My modify tab, I'll go ahead and we'll go with about a radius of 40 and segments of 12 to get it nice and round. Uh, I'm also going to do something else here and that is kind of uh, put an object going through the teapot so that we've got uh, more locations, more places that we can do uh, or see some occlusion, especially once I move these objects out of the way you can see how it is baked into the texture. Uh, so the good old standby every, every other time I've ever seen this done uh, is just put a box, a nice long box kind of cutting through our teapot here right smack in the center and that'll be nice so that we can see some of those occlusion shadows that would happen uh, right where these two intersect uh, and underneath there there would be absolutely no light getting in so that's where we're gonna get our occlusion from uh, just to go to my modify tab here real quick uh, I can select everything in my scene and just kind of assign this very first uh, empty texture slot to everything uh, and I might give it a whiter diffuse coloring so that we can actually see what's going on in our viewport as we do this. Uh, with our teapot, this is what we're going to do the ambient occlusion texture bake onto. Uh, and with this guy, we, we're going to need to do an unwrap because anytime you bake a texture, you've got to have kind of a successful uh, UVW unwrap. We're going to do ours very quick, but just know in the future that you probably spend some time uh, unwrapping your characters or even, even this silly teapot. Uh, and do it right a little bit uh, better than what we're about to do just to demonstrate this idea for you. Uh, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom of my modifier list and add that unwrap UVW which we talked about in other video demonstrations and uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the UV editor here. If I back out a little bit we can see all our UVs are all over the place uh, which is what we don't want. I'm going to select by polygon uh, and I like to make sure that my ignore back facing over here on the command panel on the right hand side is also turned off so that I can select my teapot and grab all of those surfaces uh, at once uh, regardless of whether or not the face is looking at me. In here you should see bright red everywhere as well and we can kind of come up to the top here and do a, a mapping uh, flatten mapping here or, or let's not even do that let's just since it's already kind of uh, looks like it's got a decent cut up here. Let's just go down to our arrange elements uh, where we kind of repacked our uh, our orca whale in another video demonstration and just go ahead and hit that button and repack all the elements which are nice and already flattened out for us it looks like uh, and make them fit into our uh, nice square texture slot. That'll work for us for today anyway. Okay. Uh, then I'll go ahead and make sure I turn off my polygon sub-object selection. Uh, I want to note that the map channel is set to 1 here. Uh, if you've done multi-sub-object texturing or composite texturing and you've used multiple map channels, you'll want to use one for this that hasn't been used already uh, on your object. Uh, and that way we can go right into the baking of the texture. You can hit 0 on your keyboard to open up the render to texture window. You can also find it under the rendering menu, render to texture here. And if you've got your teapot selected, it knows right away uh, that you're going to put that into the objects to bake. Uh, a few settings here. We've, we've already talked about the render to texture window for other things rather than ambient occlusion here. But we'll use it a little differently today here uh, as well. 
Uh, I like to probably add at least a couple, maybe more, in the padding slot down here under Objects to Bake. Uh, you'll also want to be sure that under General Settings, you've got this output path set to a location that you'll be able to find uh, your rendered out texture there. Down a little further here under the mapping coordinates, we're using the existing map channel and make sure it's set to 1 or whatever that map channel is matching your unwrap that you just added to, let's say, a character or an object in the future that's, that may not be map channel 1. That's what we're grabbing from, that unwrap. Down a little further under the output, uh, this is where our, our work truly sets in here. Go ahead and click the Add button. And uh, we're going to add the Ambient Occlusion, parenthesis MR for Mental Ray Map. Uh, so we want to be able to get that one for sure. Uh, if you've got other plugins or anything installed, you may have various ones, but Mental Ray comes with 3D Studio, so that's what we'll use here. Uh, ambient Occlusion, Mental Ray, and Add Elements. Uh, it'll show up in our output menu. It'll also give us a whole lot of settings to uh, adjust down here. Uh, the first of which, since we're going to display this in the viewport here, uh, we might as well just go with a 512 by 512 to keep things uh, small and fast at this point. The file name and file type, you may want to go ahead and click that. It'll take you to wherever you put your output path and uh, give it a name. Uh, I'm going to say Teapot AO Bake. And uh, I'll tell it to save for this version a JPEG so that we can quickly open it and preview it. And, and you can see it uh, also on uh, a website that you got this from here. All right. Teapot AO Bake and go ahead and hit save. I already had one there named that. I'll just tell it to overwrite. We want it to put this new texture that we're about to bake directly into the diffuse slot so that we can see the ambient occlusion, make final adjustments, and then see what else we need to do for it. Uh, so make sure that the target map slot, it should default this way, but make sure it says diffuse color. Come down here if you want a bigger size later in the future for a cleaner result, uh, for a better texture that you want to composite together. You can always go a little bit bigger. For this, we're just going to stick with 512. And then underneath here, you've got the element unique settings, which if you've done uh, any of the other video demonstrations about ambient occlusion, you should recognize a lot of these. Uh, our samples here defaults us with 16. 16. Uh, we can increase that uh, quite a bit if we want a, a higher resolution uh, shadow with less speckling. Uh, we'll go to about 128 for this right now. Your bright and your dark. Uh, can stay about the same right where they're at because we want white and white for the for the light and black for the shadow. Uh, and you may uh, in you know change around your spread and maximum distance just like you would in the actual ambient occlusion shader from Mental Ray. Uh, maybe the spread was about a 0.75, which works pretty well most of the time. And our max distance, uh, we might change that uh, a little bit as well. Uh, maybe we can say a maximum of 100 for now. We can always come back later on. Uh, and adjust that. Underneath in the baked material here, uh, because we want this to apply directly, uh, we're going to make a, a couple of settings changes here, or at least uh, make sure that they're set on the correct ones. Uh, we've got our save source create shell. Make sure that there's a, a mark in that radial output button. Uh, and then rather than duplicate source to baked, we want to create a brand new material for this teapot uh, in order to see it right there in our viewport how it's going to look in the end. Uh, the drop down standard blend is just fine for this uh, because it is going to save our ambient occlusion texture uh, render out as well. So make sure it says create new baked and then just standard blend in the drop down uh, so that we can go ahead and hit the render button once we're done. I have to hit the override files because I've already done uh, one of these looks like in this folder but uh, go ahead and uh, hit render it should start spitting out uh, the complete map uh, here, but once it's done uh, in our final area, you should find uh, wherever you did save that, here's my teapot AO bake, uh, with all of its ambient occlusion uh, shadowing here. Uh, it looks a little chaotic, but it also should have applied it directly to your teapot here. And if we take a look at this, uh, we can see that we do in fact have, blow that up a little bit more, uh, some really nice ambient occlusion shadowing around places that the light just can't get into, like the crevices here between the handle, uh, a little bit of a lighter shadow underneath here where light just doesn't reach completely. The underside of the teapot is uh, shadowed now. And if I move this uh, box that we've kind of skewered our teapot with, 
uh, we'll notice that we've got a, a rather smooth, nice shadow with uh, a little bit of lip underneath there. Uh, underneath that as well, uh, giving us this, this great ambient occlusion texture that we can then use to either composite on top of uh, a real diffuse texture color map in Photoshop, or we can create one directly uh, right here in, uh, in 3D Studio, uh, which we might as well go ahead and do here. Uh, so here we go. I can uh, create a brand new texture, grab a new texture slot here, and maybe make a diffuse color for my teapot. Uh, all the other teapots we've done in these video demonstrations have been kind of this yellow-green, so we might as well follow suit here. And there we go. Uh, we we'll make it shiny like it's made out of ceramics, so maybe a specularity level of 120 and maybe 90 for our glossiness, maybe 75, get a little bit less of that uh, pinpoint spotlight there. Uh, and you know that'll be good enough for us for right now. Uh, put the specularity down to complete white there. Now, if I assign this to my teapot here, uh, it's going to get rid of all those ambient occlusion effects that we just spent time doing. If I move the skewer, we're going to see the regular old uh, teapot. Uh, in things like video games, stuff like that, this is fine, but it's also very recognizable as a fake 3D object uh, simply because uh, ambient occlusion happens in the real world automatically. So, for our diffuse slot, I'm going to make sure that I kind of right click and just copy this color from our diffuse color swatch. And in that texture slot, we're going to go ahead and add one of those composite materials. Uh, in layer one, we don't really have to put layer one in here, but I like to do it because it displays in the viewport a little bit nicer. Uh, I'll usually add just a, a checker pattern, a uh, procedural text, uh, checker texture in there. And then I'll do my paste in both color, swatch, color swatches of that uh, green color that we chose. Uh, that gives us our overall kind of sparkly, shiny teapot uh, look. And then we can add a layer. And uh, we're going to change this layer from its normal presentation to multiply uh, here in the drop-down menu so that it only adds those shadows. Uh, anything that's darker than our normal whites uh, will get pasted on there, but anything lighter than the, than the shadows uh, is going to kind of disappear so we see the green through it, just like in our Photoshop layers. Uh, in this texture slot, we'll go ahead and load up the bitmap of the teapot AO bake that we just uh, spit out. And uh, double check, make sure that's multiplied. Now, normally when we're using a composite uh, material to do things like decals or graffiti, stuff like that, uh, we would change this map channel, give the teapot a, another UVW map modifier, stuff like that. But in this case, we want it to follow map channel 1, just like the original uh, color. So it's unnecessary. Uh, we also don't need a mask in this case, because we're using this as a multiply layer for a composite texture, uh, just like we would a layer in Photoshop. Uh, we can then back all the way out of it and make sure we do our show shaded material in viewport, uh, which is going to show you the perfect combination here of our ambient occlusion map with our nice shiny teapot texture that we just created. Uh, same thing, we've got our ambient occlusion baked right into the texture now, uh, so no matter what direct lighting that we put in uh, into this thing, uh, it'll be you know, nice and apparent there. Make a couple of lights real quick just to set something up here, uh, and we can see how nice and soft that, that uh, baked in ambient occlusion shadows uh, remain. There, we can see them a little bit better. Uh, the, the spout and the handle and, you know, in the lip of the teapot here, uh, making our, our teapot look a little bit more realistic. Uh, because I did such a quick, uh, rather awful uh, unwrap job, you might see a seam right here, seam or two there, but uh, you'll fix that when you actually do your unwrapping properly uh, and not quickly for the demonstration purposes here. All right. Uh, if you if you think your shadows are too dark, you can always come back into that uh, material now with both of them overlaid on top of each other, and uh, maybe reduce the opacity to I don't know 65 percent just to get a softer shadow. Uh, 75 or 80 uh, would do the trick there a little bit better, and that way you get your shadows, but you get more of that green shining through. Uh, and you've got some some other ways to manipulate this. You can also take this uh, image that we spit out directly into a program like Photoshop and composite it right on top uh, of another texture that you had created uh, in Photoshop and spit that out and put it into the diffuse texture slot and again it would include those uh, ambient occlusion shadows which are so great. 
uh, and we'll have something in the end that uh, really kind of looks nice and wonderful and soft and, and uh, realistic, even in a video game, real-time rendered. All right.